Hello. My name is Melissa Miller. I'm a pastor in a Mennonite congregation in Kitchener, Waterloo. And as we think about neighborly conversations, uh, I am somebody who is regularly engaged in conversation in all kinds of settings and all kinds of places. And I am humbled and grateful that I am a pastor because many of those conversations involve seeking God's truth in a variety of ways and in a variety of people. And that is what we are thinking about in Lesson 12, uh, Conversations for the Journey. So I kind of get started with the purpose statement to recognize that God's truth is present in everyone and to discern how God can teach us to respond to the needs of humanity through other traditions. So that might be an interesting starting place. Would everybody in the Sunday school class say, God's truth is present in everyone? Would there be some debate about that? It's a, it's a, good, it's a good beginning place. I think that the Bible story is a great one for helping us get at this concept of God's truth in everyone. It is the unexpected interactions between Moses and his father-in-law, um, which is a complex relationship, as the materials and the unpacking of the biblical story will tell you. Um, not unlike the complexity of some of our relationships, any one of us can sort of think about how individually or in our neighborhoods or in our churches or in our family settings, we've kind of been um, challenged to expand our understandings of how God is at work and, and to think as Christians what that means for us as Christians. So when we go to page 69, there are some questions that help us get at this thing about um, receiving counsel for others or receiving counsel from others or openness to God's truth, God's wisdom being shown to me and other people. The questions are things like, do you readily or reluctantly welcome counsel from others, from family members, from people outside your circle of friends? How open are you to receiving truth from outside your present understanding or your traditions or beliefs or worldviews? And what kind of criteria do you use to distinguish between this is of God and this is not of God? How do you sort those things out? What kind of witness to Jesus do I want to be? So because my traditional understandings of Christianity have been disrespectful and dismissive of other religious traditions, um, I can come across as superior or arrogant or unwilling um, to be open to others. And so to kind of ground myself back into Jesus, how did Jesus approach people with whom um, outside of his culture, outside of his tradition, and what kind of witness to Jesus do I want to be? Those are some of the places where I go. I think the final questions there, when have I had God's truth spoken to me from somewhere or someone unexpected? What does God want me to understand about myself? I think that these kinds of questions help us get at the possibilities of transformation through respectful conversation. And there's also a suggestion that you talk about a congregational story about a time when the congregation accessed help from outside and how that benefited the congregation or what people learned as they received counsel from outside. There's a couple of strong quotes here <clears throat> on page 73. Believing that God's truth only resides in our beliefs leaves little room for the God within others to affect how we live together. So going back to the purpose statement about God's truth resides in everyone, then if we aren't open to that, we miss those pieces of God's truth. And the authors suggest exclusionary spiritual beliefs no longer sustain us. So that's another question for you as leader and for the people in the class to consider. I suggest you close with prayer. Again, we may be unsettled by this conversation, uh, by, this by this lesson, and prayer helps to settle us and remind us that the God who stretches and challenges us is also the God who holds us. I offer this blessing for you as leader 
as you prepare and lead this lesson. May the conversations that you are having, the ones that you're having within yourself, the ones that you're having as a community and as a Sunday school class, may these neighborly conversations be ones in which God's truth is illuminated within you and within others. Amen.